Today, I'm going to show you how to do interior mapping in object space. Let's go. So for the last couple of weeks, uh, we've been covering this effect called interior mapping, where we create a false interior for our building. And up until now, all the interior mapping videos that I've made have been in tangent space, meaning that uh, the interior of the, uh, the building is dependent on the UV coordinates on the surface. Well, today we're going to go over a variation of interior mapping where I show you how to make the interior of the building dependent on the object space position of the mesh that you're mapping it to instead of the UVs. And you might want to use this technique uh, if you're using your UVs for something else and they're not very well laid out. Uh, to be able to do the interior mapping effect. Or if you wanted to do something like uh, do an interior with a roof where you could look down into the building. If we look at this version, now this is the this is the version that's in UV space or in tangent space. And what you can see is when I look down through the ceiling of the building, uh, I don't get the correct effect. I should be looking at the floor of these rooms but it's actually got it mapped kind of weird because I'm looking at a wall. It's like all of these rooms, looking at them from the top, have been turned on their sides, which is wrong. And so what I need to do is um, project this in object space if I'm going to have skylights in my building, and I need interiors for those as well. So let's take a look at what I've done. I have this other uh, alternate subgraph and it's called interior cube object. And I've uh, made this one an object space. So if I swap out my regular interior cube node that we made in a previous video with this version that's in object space, and then I wire it in instead, what you're gonna see now is that if I look at the roof of the building, I'm now looking down into the rooms from the top. And so you can see I got the walls in the right place and I'm looking down at the floors of the rooms uh, through the top of the building instead of uh, that weird uh, effect where the rooms were rotated incorrectly. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do in this video is in both Unreal and Unity, I'm gonna show you how to um, make this interior cube object subgraph and in Unreal I'll show you how to make the material function for creating interior cube mapping in object space. All right so here we are in Unity and first I'm going to walk you through the Unity subgraph for object space interior mapping and then we'll take a look at the same thing in Unreal. This is pretty similar to tangent space uh, interior mapping except obviously we're going to be using uh, the object position instead of the UV coordinates. So here's our position of our object or, or of our vertices. And you can see I'm bringing the position in in object space. I also have the camera direction and I'm transforming it. Now in the other version, I transform the camera, um, the camera direction into tangent space, but here we're going from world space to object space because this whole effect is going to be an object space and I'm combining the camera view direction and uh, the vertex positions uh, together with my room count to create the effect. Okay, so here's my room count. If we take a look at our blackboard and our graph inspector, you can see that um, in the tangent space version, room count was a vector two, but in this version, it's a vector three because I'm doing the th a three dimensional effect where I have uh, the front, back, left, right, and top, bottom as well. Whereas in tangent space, I was just concer concerned with the U and the V coordinate. So you can see I've given my room count parameter here, a default value of four, four, and four. And that'll give us four rooms across and four rooms down, plus four rooms of depth as well. Okay, so we multiply our object space position by the room count. 
And then we do something kind of interesting here and we multiply the result of that by a floating point value of 0 0.99. And this is just to fix up a little bit of imprecision that there is in the effect uh, and pre prevent it from showing some artifacting. All right, then we use the fraction node to return uh, just the decimal port of the number. It gets rid of the whole number value and returns just the decimal. And then we expand our value to a range of negative one to one by multiplying by two and subtracting one. This is something we do fairly commonly in shaders, but I'm taking a value that's just going from zero to one because I just grabbed the fraction and I'm expanding it to the negative one to one range by multiplying by two and subtracting one. All right, then for my camera vector, I multiply it by my room count, and then I take the reciprocal value, which is basically just one over the value that I'm getting here. I could also add a divide here and do one divided by my number coming in. Then I take the absolute value of that and then I also find, uh, or I multiply that by um, my incoming position here. This is very similar to what I was doing in the tangent space version. So I find the absolute value, and also I multiply it by the incoming uh, position value that I've modified here. And then I subtract uh, that multiplication from my absolute. Then I do a split so that I can find which of the three components is the smallest. And this is just like I did in tangent space as well. So I do a minimum of the red and green channels, and then I do a minimum of the result of that and the blue channel. So that gives me a value or shows me which of these three channels is the smallest. And then I multiply my original uh, camera space direction multiply by the room count, I multiply that by whichever of these three channels is the smallest. And the result of that, I take and I add it to uh, my position value that's been uh, fractioned and then expanded to the range of zero to one. And so that is going to give me uh, my final view direction that I need to look up into my cube map. Now, the rest of these nodes here are the ones that I'm using for randomizing the rooms. Just like we took a look at in uh, the video from two weeks ago, uh, we do this math here so that we can scramble the rooms around and make each one look a little bit unique. We make them look unique by uh, rotating the room so that a different wall is, is in the back for each one. So in order to do that, I'm taking uh, my position value, multiply by my room count, and then I'm taking the floor of that, or I'm rounding it down to the nearest whole number. Then I pass that into this, which is called hash 33. Now, for my tangent space version, I used the custom function called hash 23 because I was taking in the UV coordinates and then generating a random number. But here I'm using hash 33. Let me show you what's different about hash 33 from hash 23. So here is hash 33. And you can see that just like the tangent space version, I'm bringing in UV coordinates, but these UV coordinates are uh, X, Y, and Z. They're a vector three instead of a vector two. And the only thing that I've had to change is because I'm bringing in a vector three now, I have three components here. So I don't know if you remember, but on the previous version, I was using X, Y, X here. And now I can throw in that Z component because I have the third one. So X, Y, Z, Y, X, Z, and X, Z, Y. And those are the only differences between uh, hash two three and hash three three. Both of these uh, both of these subgraphs are generating a random number value, um, but this one is taking in three components, and the other one, because I was in tangent space, is taking in two components. So I've got x y z, y x z, and x z y. 
And now I can use that hash three three to generate a random number and then round it to the nearest whole number. So this is gonna give me like nice color gradient values. But once I round it, you can see that each of my channels is gonna be a solid color. It's gonna be, I'm gonna get either zero or one for red, green, and blue. And those are, are the random numbers that I need to be able to rotate my rooms. So once I've got that random number, I use this set of nodes to go ahead and do the room rotation. So here's the direction that I'm bringing in. And I just want to mask out the X and the Z components because those are the ones that I'm going to change. I don't want to change the floor or the ceiling. I just want to rotate the walls around. Uh, so I'll take my uh, X and my Y random number values and I'm going to multiply by two and subtract one just like I did over here. So I'm expanding the range here. I have a random number between uh, that's either zero or one for my three channels. And here I now have a random number that's negative one to one. And then I multiply my, um, my wall value, my XZ value by my random number. So I'm either flipping it uh, front to back or left to right. And then I take a look at my uh, the blue channel of my random numbers that I'm generating here. And depending on if the blue channel is zero or one, I either use uh, the regular version of this or I use the, uh, the swapped version of this. So this is what I'm using to, to uh, kind of randomize my rooms. Let me show you what happens if I don't randomize my rooms. I'm just gonna take this value here and wire this in. And I'm gonna skip all of the randomization here. Uh, let's just save it. And we'll switch back to our shader here. So now you can see if we take a look at our object, every single room has um, the whiteboard in the background. But because we're in object space, if I rotate the building around to the side, now the whiteboard is on the side and the painting is in the background. And on this side, uh, now the painting is on the wall and the clock is in the background, but all the rooms on each of the sides are the same. This is another interesting difference between this effect and the tangent space effect. In tangent space, it wouldn't matter which side I was looking at because the UV coordinates on each side are the same. All of the rooms on all of the sides would be the same, but in this effect, because I'm projecting it in object space, you can see this side I'm looking at the doors this side I'm looking at the clocks, this side I'm looking at the painting on the wall, this side I'm looking at the whiteboard. So anyway, uh, this is what it looks like when it's not randomized. And if I come back in here and reconnect my random and save it again, now you can see it's randomized and each of the individual rooms has a different feature on the back wall. So that's what my randomization is doing and it's, it's pretty effective. All right, so now you can see right here at the end, I am recombining things. So I take the red and the green channels and pass those into the red and the blue. And then I take my original green channel from my final value that's been calculated here without the random numbers. And I pass that into green because I don't want to change uh, the top and the bottom, like I said, I just want to change the sides and the front and the back. Then I use my combine node here and I pass my final directional value out. And you can see I'm also taking my random value that's rounded and passing it out to this random value here. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I also use my random value for randomizing um, which rooms in the building are lit up. So you can see here, some of the rooms are lit here, and then there's a different random uh, pattern here of rooms that are lit, and then here as well, different rooms are lit versus dark inside. All right, so that is how you make object space interior cube mapping in Unity. 
Let's take one more quick look at it. I'll just turn off my blackboard and my inspector. So you can see I'm bringing in the camera space direction and transforming it into object space. I'm sorry, I'm bringing in the camera direction in world space, transforming it from world to object. And I'm bringing in the position in object space. And then we do lots of math. <laughs> and create our randomized rooms and then output our final direction vector and random value. Okay, I hope this is helpful and if you want to switch from doing your interior cube mapping in tangent space to doing it in object space, you can do it this way. Let's switch over to Unreal and I'll show you how to do it there. All right, here we are in Unreal. And in last week's video, we polished up our interior cube map shader, created the building exterior, and then used our cube map to make it look like there are rooms inside. And now we're going to go ahead and create this interior cube object space material function. So just like we looked at in Unity, uh, you can see if I look down on the top of the building, I'm looking at rooms that are sideways because I'm currently using the, the tangent space version of this. But if I take the object space version and substitute it instead, now you can see when I look down into the building from the top, I'm actually looking at the floors of the rooms, which is much more realistic, which is the way that it should be. So we're going to take a look at how to create this uh, interior object space material function now. All right, so the function is starting with the local position node. Uh, in Unity, it's called object space position, and in Unreal, it's called local position. So I'm taking that value and multiplying it by 0 0.01. And this is because in Unity, uh, things are measured in meters, and in Unreal, things are measured in centimeters. So I need to convert to meters by multiplying by 0 0.01 here. All right, then I've got my input room count, which is a vector three. And if I look over here at my default values or my preview values, you can see that I've got a value of four for each of these. So I've, I converted this from a vector two in the tangent space version to a vector three in the object space version. Then I multiply my local position and my room count together. And then I multiply the results of that by 0.99 again to avoid precision issues. And then after multiplying by 0.99, I'm going to take the fractional portion of the result. So this is returning just everything to the right of the decimal and throwing out any whole numbers. Then I multiply by 2 and subtract 1 uh, to expand the the vector from 0 to 1 to negative 1 to 1. And you can see there are a couple of flipped signs down here. I'm multiplying by 2, negative 2, 2. And then I'm subtracting 1, negative 1, 1. And the reason that I'm doing this is, again, because Unreal is Z up. And so I have to make a couple of adjustments uh, so that my rooms are facing the correct direction. Now I'm going to take the result of that and I'm going to multiply it up here by my incoming camera vector. So I've got my camera vector, transform it to world space by setting the source to world space, or sorry, transform it to local space by setting the source to world space and the destination to local. And then I multiply it by negative one, one, negative one. And the reason that I'm doing this is to compensate for Unreal's uh, Z up orientation. So I'm going to take my uh, camera vector here and my position here and multiply them together. First of all, I'll, I'll find the reciprocal of my camera vector and then I multiply it by my local position. And then I also find the absolute value of the reciprocal and I subtract uh, my multiplied position by that absolute value. Now, 
I need to find which of the three components of this vector is the smallest. So I'm going to do a minimum. I'm going to split components for the red, green, and blue and find the minimum of red and green and then find the minimum of that and blue. So that's going to give me which of these three is the smallest. And then I'm going to multiply that again by my, um, my camera vector. And then I'm going to take the result of that. So I'm going to take the result of all of these computations here. And I'm going to add them to my adjusted local position. And this is going to give me my final direction that I can use to sample my cube map. Uh, but just like we did in Unity, we need to generate some random values so that I can rotate the rooms and kind of randomize them so different rooms are facing the back. So in order to do that, I'm going to take my local position um, and then and take the floor of that value, which rounds down to the nearest whole number. And then I'm passing it into my random number generator, which here is called hash 33. And just like we did in Unity, if I take a look at hash 33, you can see that now I'm bringing in a vector three instead of a vector two. And I'm swizzling the components around. So uh, my first random number is just the red, green, and blue. And then I'm taking the blue, red, and green. And then the green, blue, and red. So those are the only changes that I made from uh, the hash two, three. Because we have three components now, we don't have to reuse one. And I can use all three of them as I swizzle them around. So you can see that the first one just uses straight RGB and then I kind of mix them up a little bit. And then other than that, this is exactly the same as the hash two, three that we made uh, in the video from two weeks ago. And the purpose of this is to generate uh, three random values for me. All right, so now I have my three random values and you can see here that I'm rounding them to the nearest zero or one. So this gives me values where each of the three channels is either zero or one, which is what I need in order to be able to swap these, uh, the rooms around randomly. All right, so you can see here, I'm outputting my random value and this output I'm gonna use for lighting the rooms differently or, or picking which random rooms are lit. And then here I'm actually generating uh, the positive and negative values that I need to swap my rooms around. So I blend between negative one, one and one negative one, one using the red channel, the red random value. And then I blend between one, one, one and negative one, one using the green channel value. I multiply the two of those together. And then I take my vector and I multiply that by this random value that I've generated. And then I take that and I swizzle it. So I take X, Y, Z and swap it out for Y, X, Z. And I blend between my original value and my swizzled value using the blue channel of my random number generator. So now that my rooms are uh, all mixed up, I can output my direction here. And this output direction is what I use to look up my cube map. All right, so let's take one more look at our shader. So you can see I've got my camera vector and my local position. I multiply those together and then I find the smallest of the three components. I multiply that by my camera vector and then add the results to my local position. And then I use these nodes here to uh, randomize the rooms so that I've got different things um, so that each room looks different or has different walls in the back. All right, and then if we take a look at our interior shader again, you can see that just like in Unity, if I look down at my rooms from the top, I can see that now I'm looking at the floor, whereas in tangent space, I would just be looking at another wall and it wouldn't handle this correctly. You can also see that my rooms are random uh, differently on each of the four sides, 
And if I look at the bottom of my building, <laughs> that works correctly. I can also look into the rooms from underneath and see the ceiling. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so there are a lot of uses for uh, object space projection of interior mapping over tangent space. And I hope this has been valuable for you to see that there is an alternate method of doing this. So if you need to use your UVs for something else, or you need to correctly handle seeing in from the top, uh, there are all kinds of different um, reasons why you might want to do your cube mapping in object space instead of tangent space. Uh, but there you have it. I hope this has been useful for you and that you can see that there are multiple ways of doing this effect. If you have any questions about these things, uh, be sure to leave them down in the comments. And I hope you guys have a great week and we'll see you in next week's video.